Hi, this is Paul Page of the Journal of Commerce. We're here at TPM Asia in Shenzhen. I'm talking with Bjorn van Jensen. Bjorn is Vice President of Global Logistics at Electrolux. Uh, Bjorn, what's your assessment right now of the peak season? We're pretty much in the middle of it, if not at the end of it. What's What's your view of how it's been and how it's going? It hasn't. <laughs> Basically, in a word, there hasn't been a peak season, at least not one uh, that, that, that it reminds you of the peak seasons like they used to be, when, when, when space was a problem, when equipment was a problem, when, when GRIs would stick. Um, those peak seasons are, those days are gone. And, and I really think they're gone, uh, uh for, for, for the foreseeable year, you future. Think you think yeah. peak seasons are really kind of a thing of the past? I beg your pardon? You think peak seasons are a thing of the past? I think generally? so, yeah, I think so. I think what's, what's happened is, is, is two things. And first of all, you have now a glut of capacity, uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, and, and we can talk about whether that capacity is going to be reduced artificially over time, but 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 the fact remains that the capacity is there. It's there now. It's not being uh, uh, reduced, and and the demand from 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 the the, the world's you know shippers is just not there. Uh, so that's the first thing that happened, which in and of itself you know precludes the existence of a of a peak season. Uh, the other thing that's happened, I think. Uh, and that's certainly the case for us, and I know it's the case for other large shippers, is 2010, the capacity crunch that we had there, which was artificially induced, uh, taught all of us how to flatten the curve. So a lot of us started, you know, ordering earlier, you know, to, to, to not have that hump that comes in September, October. So spreading it out. Yeah, basically. And, and, and so you're seeing a lot of... Uh, a lot of the shipments that would normally happen in, in, in August, September, October are now really happening in June and July. And, and, and I guess, you know, that's probably not a bad thing, that we learned how to smooth out those curves and that we learned how to manage with less inventory and that we learned how to use the carriers in a sense as floating warehouses uh, and, and that we all look very deep inside our business and also challenge some of the ways in which we do things, right? And, and I think that has really contributed. To, 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 to the elimination of peak seasons going forward. So how, how have shipper carrier relations changed? I mean, there was a lot of tension, 2010, uh, 2009. Ha have carriers changed their approach to shippers? Some have, right? And, and, and there's still, there's always going to be a, an adversarial relationship between shippers and carriers, I believe. It's not because that's a desirable state of affairs. It's just a fact that one is a supplier and the other one is, is, is a customer, right? And, and we're dealing with an archaic industry. We're dealing with an industry that, that bases a lot of its practices on, on stuff that happened hundreds of years ago. We're dealing with an industry that's uh, predominantly managed by people who are even older than, than, than you and me, right? Who came up through shipping in a different era and to a large extent bemoan the passing of that era. And I think it's going to take a while before we get to a new state of affairs. We're seeing some initiatives out there uh, from some carriers uh, in terms of changing the way they interact with shippers, in terms of changing the way they communicate with shippers. Uh, I, my firm belief is that this is, uh, it's about, you know, chunks of iron that are, that are shaped as ships, but it's also about the people who run it. And, and, it, and it's always going to be about the people who run it, right? Because this is logistics. It's not a commodity, but it is, okay? It is, but it's a strategic commodity for a lot of us. It's not one, it's not paper cups, it's not coffee mugs, it's not, you know, bottled water. But it is a commodity that has certain characteristics around it. Uh, but on the periphery of that commodity, we need to have interaction with the carriers and the service providers in a very human way. And, and, and you can't, in my opinion, boil this down to a, oh, we just need the right technology and everything will be great. We need people is what we need. We need people who understand the business. We need people who are not afraid to reach out to a customer. You know, one of the, one of the things that really, you know, stuck with me from, from the previous presentation was a guy who said, the question I want a carrier to ask me when he comes into my office is, what keeps you awake at night? You know, it really, really started to resonate with me in a big way, right? Because, do you know what? I've never been asked that question either. I do make it a point to tell carriers what keeps me up at night. But I think carriers ought to, you know, learn how to ask that kind of question. So it's not just about the rate? No. So it's never about the rate. And, and, and frankly, I think we need to 
we need to move away from the notion that this is all about rates because it's not, right? I mean, the company I represent, we buy freight in a big way. We uh, buy competitive rates, and I am never, ever going to apologize for taking a low rate when it's offered to me, and I'm never, ever going to apologize for attempting to get a lower rate for a better service. It's what I do. It's my job. It's what I get paid for. Uh, and 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 it's and it, it plays into the strategic priorities of, of my company. But as an example, on any large trade, in any any trade lane, any given point-to-point combination, we nominated at least three carriers. And I guarantee you, those three carriers are not the same rates. There can be a spread of hundreds of dollars per TU, depending on all the other stuff like transit time, like availability, like schedules, like number of strings, like equipment, like the way they interact with us and make us feel about them that, that, that incentivizes us to choose to pay them more for a service that we might be able to buy a lot cheaper. Okay. But it's but, not about the rate. It never was. Okay, let me be the carrier you have not had. What what does keep you up at night? What keeps me up at night is the unpredictability of my own supply. Okay? What keeps me up at night is um, that we don't have and ability ourselves sometimes to forecast our shipping needs, you know, more than three months out. Three months is about the is about the, the horizon beyond which everything starts to bend and, and you can't you can't see anything reliably. But that's what keeps me up at night is finding a way not only to forecast that, that's my problem, that's not a carrier's problem, but to interact with a carrier and communicate with a carrier in a way that I can be certain that no matter what those fluctuations are, I will have the space. Right. So are you sharing your forecast, your internal yes, forecast? Yes, we are. With we, them are. To, we, 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 we go to great lengths uh, to, to share uh, rolling forecasts. We, we, we share rolling forecasts three months out uh, with all of our carriers. Uh, and it's, it's, it's dark and dirty work. Uh, Is it and, fairly accurate? Uh, yeah, we, we, have a, we have a very good accuracy. I mean, when carriers are talking about downfalls against bookings, we do not have downfalls. We have downfalls against forecasts. We have fluctuations in what we ship back. We also have, you know, what are they called, upfalls uh, against our forecasts. But but we don't have downfalls against bookings. Once we book, we book. But our forecasts, we go to great lengths, three months out with all our carriers. We think they appreciate it. We certainly hear that, that, that we're one of the few. Um, I've heard a few others now who do it, and, and, and that makes me feel good. It's a way forward. We have to We have to also step up to the plate as shippers. Uh, and say, you know what, carriers are frankly lousy at forecasting demand, but so are we, okay? And, and you know, the, the, someone once told me there are only two kinds of sales forecasts, lucky and wrong. And, and, and you know, I don't think that's ever going to change. But we can work together to make them uh, more lucky or less wrong. Well, they've got their own forecasts on their supply. Yeah. Right now there's a lot of discussion about layups, uh, possible idling. Uh, yeah. The business, the demand side being what it is. Is that something right now that's keeping you up at night? Are you worried about supply? It's not keeping me up at night, but it is certainly something that's on my radar screen. And as, as it is on the radar screen of every shipper I know, right? And are we expecting carriers to lay up tonnage? Yes, we are expecting carriers to lay up tonnage. Uh, I think a blind man can see with his cane that, 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 that something's got to give. And, and, and the only thing that can give is, is, is the capacity to plug in, in, in these trades. If carriers want to have a prayer of, of, of raising rate levels, uh, they have to do it. So we know it's coming. Uh, we think, uh, we don't think it's going to be so severe as to match, you know, what happened in 2010, which was awful. Uh, for carriers, it was awful for the shippers. We don't think it's going to happen again. But, but we're seeing it now. Capacity is being laid up. Right, you know, the number of laid-up vessels has gone up to what 160 something as of as of yesterday, and 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 that in itself is a 20-fold increase on the week before. So it's happening, um, but we hope and we think and we pray that it's going to be done responsibly this time, uh, unlike the last time. Are the world's consumers going to bail everybody out? Well, we certainly hope so, don't we? <laughs> I mean, we all hope so. We're all hoping and praying for an upturn in in consumer demand uh, for an upturn in, in cargo movements and and for an upturn in, in everything. Um, but uh, do, do I know whether that's going to happen? No. I wish I did. Great. Bjorn, thank you very much. You're most welcome.